This is the Lock Sportscast, episode number four, The Value of Community. In today's episode, Andy Mack's YouTube channel deleted, community members collaborating to make a challenge lock, the value of the lock sport community, and another black belt picker. Welcome to new listeners. Welcome back to my returning listeners. Thank you everyone that contributed to this episode and everyone that has shared this with others. It really helps. Thank you much. Please keep uh, sending in your news, links, and giveaways. You can send them to podcast at thelocksportscast.com or any of the other contact methods listed in the show notes. And don't forget to share the podcast with your friends. First up, we have corrections and additions. I plan on putting the corrections at the beginning of the podcast, not burying them at the end. I invite everyone to uh, keep me honest by pointing out my errors and mistakes. So on last week's What is Locksport, I forgot to include bumping in What is Locksport. Bumping is a lock opening technique where you use a key that's specially cut sometimes called a bump key or a 999 key. The bump key is usually like spaced out just a little bit from its normal position and then tapped in with some object like a little hammer or screwdriver or something to try and bounce the pins to separate them and allow you to, to allow them to separate at the shear line and allow you to open the lock. Anyway, just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that because I don't know why I didn't think of it last week. In community news this week, Andy Mack's YouTube channel was deleted, and this actually happened, well, it was announced by Helpful last week. Uh, I didn't find out about it till after I had already started recording and everything for last week's episode, so it didn't make it into that one. I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but he has created a new YouTube channel, he lost all his old videos and has to start from scratch again, no subscribers... No videos, but he's already started posting uh, quite a few videos. He's, I think, up to 200 and some subs at this point. If you know who Andy Mack is, or even if you don't, uh, there'll be a link in the description below. Please go check out his channel. If you're at all interested in lever locks, he is like a lever lock picking guru. I've heard of this type of thing happening on YouTube a lot more lately. I mean, maybe I just wasn't paying attention before, but channels getting hijacked or hacked. I wonder if that's something like what happened here. Like I said, I don't have details on Andy's exact situation. A few security reminders for everyone on their YouTube channel. Just uh, first uh, disclaimer, I'm not a security expert. This is just kind of a reminder for some basic security practices. I recommend that you have the two-factor authentication turned on on your YouTube channel. Don't use the same password that you use on any other service. A password manager will help for this. Another thing to think about is to be careful what apps you have linked to your YouTube account. Every app has access to certain features on your account, whatever that particular app needs to have to function. Some of them are just being able to see your videos. Some of them are allowed to do anything add, remove, delete videos, change things. I know like TubeBuddy gets a whole bunch of permissions. Every app that you link to your channel gets a token that allows them to do those things. If the app gets hacked, if you have trusted an app that gets a lot of permissions and it's not secure and somebody figures out how to hack that, they can then get access to your account. So it's just another attack surface. I kind of think about apps like locks. So if you have a gate, your YouTube account is your, is your gate you need to keep closed, and you have your main login for YouTube, that's your, your lock, a good secure padlock, you hope. But say you have more apps. It's like having several locks linked together in a chain. Any one of them being open will allow you to remove the, the hasp or the chain and open the gate, every app you add makes you a little less secure. So I'll have a link in the show notes to uh, the 
Google page where you can check what apps have access to your account and remove their access if you want. I personally use one app on my YouTube channel, and that app, I'm paranoid, so that app gets authorized to have access to the channel. I use it after I upload a video, and then I immediately go in and remove the access. So even if somebody were to try and hack it, it does. its token is invalidated at that point, and it doesn't have access, or at least I hope so. Another thing to keep in mind is to make sure that you have your account recovery options set up properly so that if something does happen, you can contact Google support. I'll have some links in the show notes for that too. If you suspect you've been hacked or your channel's been hijacked, you can go contact Google support. They can confirm who you are. They can look for suspicious activity on your account. And I have seen in some of the support threads where they have been able to get people's channels back, may or may not be able to get your videos back depending on what happened, but at least you get the main channel with your subscribers back. So more news from the YouTube Block Sport community. Lockmania has announced that he is feeling burned out and he's going to be taking a break from Lock Sport videos a little bit. He's not going to completely quit and he says he is coming back. He just wanted to ev- let everybody know that He's feeling burned out. He used to make like five videos a week. It's real easy to get burned out after doing that for any length of time. So his videos are going to be a little more sporadic for a little while. He plans on doing his Christmas series still, and I will put a link to his channel in the show notes below too. I received an email from RunePicker this last week. And he said, I really enjoyed the latest episode of the podcast. They are very fun to listen to, and I look forward to each episode. I wanted to let everyone know of something that's going on in the community. Not sure if it is first. Myself, Georgia Jim, and Picking Patriot. Those are their YouTube names. Uh, They also have different names on the Reddit, some of them. They are all working on a handmade challenge lock that will be picked by Picking Paradise, or Mr. Paradise, depending on which service you're on. I asked Room Picker for a little more uh, information on that project, and he sent me another email. He says, The idea was originated by me. I put a post on Reddit asking if people were interested in making a collaboration challenge log. Georgia Jim was the one that responded. I was looking for a partner because I suck at making key pins, and I thought it would be cool to do a collaboration. Since we are using the 410 Lotto lock as our basis, I decided we need to make a different body for the lock since you have to destructively get a 410 to get access to its core. I contacted my friend Blatt, Blatt, I think that's how you say it, since he had a 3D printer and had designing expertise. He said yes, so we brought him into the fold. Mr. Paradise caught wind of what we were doing and expressed interest in picking the lock first. Since he was a mutual friend of all of ours, we decided to let him be the first. Work is divided as such. Rune Picker, modding the core and the Bible, as well as making the key. Picking Patriot, designing and 3D printing a custom body for the lock. Georgia Jim, making and designing the pins and springs, as well as making a custom wooden box with wood-burned artwork on the lid. We have a finalized schematic for the work that we have all added to. This schematic, along with three prizes, will be included with the lock for the person to look at after they pick the lock. They must pick the lock to get access to the document and the prizes, as the challenge lock will be locking another box that contains these items. I will have links in the description for all three of their YouTube channels. So as this project progresses, maybe they'll give us some videos. This sounds like a a really cool project to me, and I'll be looking forward to seeing how it progresses, seeing the end result, and watching uh, Mr. Paradise pick it. I think it's a great demonstration of how well this community works together. And it reminded me of an idea that I had for making challenge boxes very similar to theirs, but my idea was, since I like to weld and do metal work, I thought about making uh, some challenge locks, then welding up some small metal boxes to install them on, 
The box would contain a log and a small prize, the idea being similar to a geocache type setup. You pick the lock, you sign the log, you take the prize and replace it with another, some little trinket, nothing expensive. And Room Pickers Project got me thinking about it again, so I'm thinking maybe I should finally start working on that. What do you guys think? Let me know. All right, on to the main topic for today. I don't plan the topics I'm talking about, at least not at the moment. So I just kind of look at the news and information and comments that I get during the week, and I just kind of go where it leads me. And last week I received some comments from Southampton Lock Picking Club and Mogsy, and they got they led me on this uh, direction about the value of the lock sport community. I'm going to go ahead and read the comments by those two, and then we'll go on to the rest of the subject. So Southampton Lock Picking Club left the comment, I know for many, especially those at this time with mental health issues or who don't have family or friends around them otherwise, the community has also provided them with a great sense of comfort as well as a good sense of belonging through all of these new friends we meet and have. A point that might be a good thing to touch on in your future podcasts is what Locksport helps them with, either in terms of learning or how it has benefited their health, especially during this global lockdown. And then Mogsy said, in a totally separate comment, I want to say, without the massive support, help, and encouragement of the whole community, and especially the LPU Discord server, I would never even get close to discovering the beauty of high security locks. I have never before seen such a welcoming, encouraging, and warm community, and I feel like I have found a hobby where I can stay for a long time. I really can't praise the community enough. And I 100% agree with that. My personal experience has been amazing with this community. Compared to a lot of the other hobbies I tried to do, some of them can be quite critical and not as accepting of, of new people. Some of them are are great, but this one seems to be to a whole new level. I posted on Reddit asking people for stories of how the Locksport community has helped them, and I got quite a few responses. So Grain of Rice said, I got into lock picking because of my love affair with twisty puzzles, Rubik cubes and such. But in that community, you're either a speed solver, builder, or a collector. The other thing about those puzzles is that once you understand commutators and conjugates as they relate to twisty puzzles and group theory, the process is the same for developing logarithms that will solve the current puzzle you're working on. Locksport was great because they are mechanical puzzles from everyday items. Here we solve them using tolerance differentials in machining which makes 20 of the same lock different puzzles. The theory behind picking and manipulation is pretty straightforward. The practice and the skill Well, that's a different story, and there's not much written on the application of how it feels. This is, of course, very subjective, but this community, with its experience, is able to help each other describe the experience and share that information. Through this communication and collaboration, there is more information to help someone getting into this hobby. I am only a year down this rabbit hole, and I develop new skills on a weekly basis by participating in this community, skills that I would not have found elsewhere, come up with on my own, or acquired in a vacuum. With what little experience I have, I try to pay it forward by sharing my experience, hoping that some information I give or tips I found helpful will help someone else. We are using Reddit and Discord, of all places, as a meeting place, and I have been further impressed by the dedication of the moderation team and the leaders of this community to keep this forum of information clean and on topic tough to do when you look at other parts of the internet. Uh, The next one, Elixirs shared, I don't like to talk about this much, but I'm not doing too well mentally, and a lot of people in the community have replied to me or one of my posts, and it brightens my day almost every time. It's so crazy to think that they make my day immensely better and don't even know it. So to anyone that welcomed me or gave me advice, thank you. It's so uplifting to feel cared for. Even the little things help. And I can't agree with that more. As I've discussed, I have some social issues. 
but this community helps pull me out of my little shell, this podcast being a good example, because they are so welcoming and they're not overly critical on the on the overall. And I'm not sure how to say this name. Um, Kalem83 said, I'm pretty active on the Discord and got lots of help and advice when starting out as I was making all my own tools. Fast forward a few days ago, I'm now a green belt and have lately been attacking the ASA D12, a purple belt lock. I was lamenting the loss of my favorite pick to the evil keyway on this thing, ascribing it to poor steel that I used for my lock picks and explaining that I simply can't afford to buy commercial tools. Up pops a DM from somebody that I not only have never spoken with, but have never seen speak at all, and they PayPal me money to buy the SS Dev hook set out of nowhere, simply in order to, quote, make someone's day. Well, mission accomplished. This community is ludicrously wholesome. Another comment by Williams Brain. Been picking for a while now. I got into it because of a coworker walking around popping masters. He explained how to do it, got me my first crap pick set, and it was on from there. I got a better crap pick set, a cheap Goso knockoff, polished and improved. I lurked here, learned, read, and finally popped my first 1100 not that long ago. Everyone has been supportive and helpful despite how stupid or ignorant I may have sounded. A few downvotes now and then, sure, but usually someone helps. The user, Dark Side of Link, in particular, checks up on my progress and has given me tons of advice and has a great YouTube channel. I'll put a link below. And user Pick in Paradise has been awesome in that regard as well. My flare says green, but it will say blue soon. Official submission for a challenge lock coming within a couple of weeks, and hopefully it goes around the community. I have seen it all. Noobs getting advice from me and others, and awesome videos from higher level pickers picking stuff I'm not even close to ready for. So much entertainment and education comes from this awesome subreddit and community. Happy picking to you all. And the last comment I'm going to share here is from Engineer Snowman, who, by the way, just earned his purple belt. Congratulations. He said, I tend to ask a lot of questions. Some are good, and some are, well, less good. And yet, none of my questions have been ignored. And there's always someone who has the knowledge, time, and patience to explain. On top of that, the answers are always helpful. And not just something you say to get the other guy to shut up. I can actually ask questions from the best guys in the business, and they're willing to help. It always amazes me. Another thing I have to mention is the way people are willing to help with finding locks that are rare where you live. Someone always has one they can send out for a very modest price, for free, or trade for something you have. Uh, yeah, that is that is one of the great things that this community is. It, everyone is helpful with their time, their knowledge, and materially with you know picks, tools, locks to pick. That that's one of the things that's just amazing about this community. There's so much support and so much caring. And it really, it touches me. So I, I had to share all of this stuff with you guys. So I kind of like to, to make this maybe a running segment, uh, just adding stories as they come in. So if you have any stories of how the community has helped you, if you would like to have me share them here, and they can be anonymous if you want, um, just let me know that in advance. But send them to me, podcast at thelocksportscast.com. And I will get those read on the air. I really enjoy having positive stories, especially at this time of the, in the world. So, all right, we have a new black belt announcement on the Lockpickers United Discord. Everyone, please congratulate our newest black belt at Justin McSlappy. He has slain the Abloy profile and classic with his homemade disc detainer tools, which are without question advanced and refined. Additionally, he's made a high-quality cutaway. Let him hear it. (laughs) 
All right. Uh, I did find one internet story kind of related to Locksport that came up this week. And it is a buyer's guide to padlocks on the Bob Vila website. Uh, there'll be a link in the show notes. I think you guys should should head over and check it out. I won't bore you by reading the whole article, but I found uh, there are some interesting choices and uh, the phrasing on some statements is kind of interesting. And moving on, another thing shared to me here by Mogzi who has been great at supporting this podcast with his information, by the way. Thank you very much, Mogsy. He says, Hi, and thank you for a really cool podcast. I love tuning in when I'm in the car. A tip for something to bring up in a later episode is Lockfall Laboratories instructional videos. His latest on Medico. First, there is a video on how Medico works, and then the attack methods and how to attack it. They are very good videos. I'll leave a link in the the show notes. So uh, go check those out. If you have any interest in picking medicals whatsoever, or even if you're just curious about how they work, he has great 3d animations. He explains things very well. Thank you for sharing this with uh, me, Mogsy, because I didn't know about them either. So I really appreciate it. So everybody should go check those out. Like I said, links in the show notes below. On the giveaways front this week, uh, same ones as last week. We've got the shout-out Monday from Starry Lock. He shouts out every Monday, shout-out Monday. He does a highlight of a YouTube channel with fewer than 100 subscribers. That's a Locksport YouTube channel. He tries to incentivize everyone to subscribe to those channels by holding a monthly giveaway for a Law Lock Tools gift certificate. There'll be a link in the show notes for his channel. And currently I am still running the Packlock Month giveaway on my YouTube channel, Charles Builds Crap, where I give away a custom engraved Packlock every month for the year of 2020. However, stay tuned for some information on that coming up. Content for this episode was provided by Rune Picker. Mogsy, Helpful Lock Picker, Starry Lock, and via their posts on the Reddit question I left, we have Grain of Rice, Elixirs, Kalem83, or is it Salem83? I don't know. Williams Brain, Engineer Snowman. I have a special thanks to Southampton Lock Picking Club and Mogsy for the topic idea for this episode. Uh, Every one of them that I know has a YouTube channel, there'll be links in the show notes below. I would appreciate it if you go check them out. Some news about the state of the podcast. Uh, I've been having fun doing this, so I've decided to just commit to doing it. I've paid for a year of hosting in advance. I registered thelocksportscast.com for the podcast and linked in that email. So you may have noticed that I went from using the charles at charlesbuildscrap.com to is now podcast at locksportscast.com. But I'm not too picky. You can send it to either one because they both go to the same inbox. So I'm currently having to spend a fair amount of time each week researching some stuff on my own, building the weekly topic discussion that I use to fill time since I don't always have enough news to keep it to where I want to for length. I'm not totally set on the length yet it depends right now i'm trying to keep it to at least 30 minutes with the amount of time that it takes i may have to take a break from my youtube locksport videos until i can streamline my workflow on this podcast this podcast feels like it has more purpose than my youtube channel youtube channel is just me kind of sharing me in my journey through Locksport. I feel there's more benefit to the community with this podcast at the moment. There are a bunch of channels out there if you want to see somebody pick a lock. There are a lot of pickers out there and a lot of them better than I am and more interesting than I am. So at this point, I'm going to put the main part of my focus on this podcast. I'm still planning on doing the Pack Lock a Month giveaway videos on my YouTube channel, but depending on how things go, I may end up actually transferring that into the podcast so that the remainder get given away in the podcast. We're just going to 
play it by ear and see how that goes with my time. Remember, this podcast needs your support. Please send me any information you have that is Locksport related, even if you don't think it's important. It might just be the bit of information I need. If you support the show in some way, like providing information that I can use, I'll give you a shout out. So let me know if you have a YouTube channel or anything else that you want me to share to share with the listeners. Thanks for listening, and remember, keep it legal. Johnny, I apologize. I forgot you were there. You may go now.